Hey, everybody. Welcome to today's lesson on the gross anatomy and routine projections of the chest. This essential topic forms the foundation for accurate imaging and diagnosis of conditions related to the chest. In this lesson, we'll cover appropriate medical terminology, the anatomy of the chest, and routine projections for radiographs. Let's dive in. In the general anatomy lesson, we discussed that the thoracic cavity is the cavity extending from the superior thoracic aperture where structures enter the thorax to the inferior thoracic aperture. The diaphragm separates the thoracic cavity from the abdominal cavity. The thoracic cavity is separated into the mediastinum, which contains all thoracic structures except the lungs and pleura, and the right and left pleural cavities, all of which are lined by serous membranes. Now let's apply these terms and use them to identify the corresponding anatomy of the thoracic viscera. The thoracic cavity contains the heart and lungs, organs of the respiratory, cardiovascular, and lymphatic systems, the inferior portion of the esophagus, and the thymus gland. The respiratory system consists of the pharynx, larynx, trachea, bronchi, and two lungs. The pharynx is considered part of the upper airway, which will be discussed in a separate lesson. The trachea extends into the thoracic cavity through the mediastinum to the carina, where it bifurcates or divides into the two primary bronchi. The left and right primary bronchi enter the lungs and divide into the bronchial trees. The lungs are the organs of respiration and provide the mechanism for introducing oxygen into the blood and removing carbon dioxide from the blood. The lungs are composed of parenchyma and have a rounded superior apex and a broad inferior base that rests on the diaphragm. The bases of healthy lungs form points called the costophrenic angles. This is a key area to evaluate on radiographic images of the chest. Both lungs are separated into superior and inferior lobes. The right superior lobe is divided further, creating a middle lobe. The right lung is shorter and broader than the left lung because of the position of the liver and heart. During inspiration, the lateral margins descend into the parietal pleura, forming the costophrenic angle. The mediastinal surface is concave, with a depression called the hilum that accommodates the bronchi, pulmonary blood vessels, lymph vessels, and nerves. The mediastinum is the area of the thorax surrounded by the sternum anteriorly, the spine posteriorly, and the lungs bilaterally. The following structures are contained in the mediastinum. The heart, aorta and great vessels, trachea, esophagus, thymus, lymphatics, nerves, fibrous tissue, and fat. Bony anatomy visible on a chest radiograph can include the bony thorax, which is the part of the skeletal system that provides a protective framework for the thoracic viscera. The bony thorax is made up of the ribs and sternum, which will be discussed in another lesson. Other bony anatomy visible include the clavicles, scapulae, inferior vertebrae of the cervical spine, all 12 thoracic vertebrae, and sometimes the superior vertebrae of the lumbar spine. Topographical landmarks used for positioning patients for a chest X-ray include the vertebral prominence, the jugular notch, and the inferior angles of the scapulae. The vertebral prominence is the spinous process of C7 and can be palpated on most patients by applying light pressure with the fingertips at the base of the neck. This can be helpful when positioning a patient for the posteroanterior or PA, chest projection. The jugular notch is the deep notch or depression on the superior portion of the sternum below the thyroid cartilage. It can be easily palpated and is helpful when positioning a patient for anteroposterior, or AP, and lateral chest projections. The inferior angle of the scapula is the lowest projection of the shoulder blade, usually at the level of the axilla. It can be easily palpated, especially when standing behind the patient, and is helpful when positioning PA chest projections. The routine radiographic projections for the chest are PA and lateral. For the posteroanterior or PA projection, the entire thoracic cavity should be included from the vertebra prominence to below the lower rib margin. The lungs should be visible from the apices to the costophrenic angles, and the image should be taken on suspended inspiration to depress the diaphragm. Additionally, the outer skin margins on both sides should be included laterally to ensure all relevant anatomy is demonstrated. 
For the lateral projection, the patient should be upright with their left side against the IR, and again, the entire thoracic cavity should be included with the lungs visible from the apices through the costophrenic angles, the sternum included anteriorly, and the posterior ribs included posteriorly to ensure all relevant anatomy is demonstrated. It is important to note that posterior costophrenic angles are slightly inferior to the anterior angles. This is a key point to remember when moving from a PA to lateral position. In summary, the chest is made up of the thoracic cavity containing the pleural cavities, mediastinum, and organs of the respiratory and cardiovascular systems contained therein. Many of these organs can be visualized on routine chest radiographs. However, some require additional views or modalities. The routine radiographic projections for the chest include the PA and lateral. In the next lesson, we will take a closer look at the radiographs to identify this anatomy.